Hello, this quick clip aims to summarise some of the evidence for benzene structure and also to try and give an overview as to why we now think Kekulé's original structure was incorrect. So let's have a look at Kekulé's original structure, his original proposal, based on the idea that uh, he'd had a dream, thinking that uh, if a snake was to bite its own tail it would form a ring structure, which was his inspiration for putting forward the proposal for benzene. So if you remember, he's working with the formula C6H6, but couldn't, couldn't work out exactly how it could bond if uh, it was a straight-chain um, hydrocarbon, such as a, a multi-alkene um, with several CC double bonds. So he came up with the idea that you had a ring structure, like we mentioned, that had alternating double and single carbon-carbon bonds and it uh, went between two resonance structures where the bonds would um, flip round. And they would do so by transfer of an electron pair like this around the ring. So what would happen is they would move back and forth quickly between these two resonance structures. So after Linus Pauling, um, the American Nobel Prize laureate for his work on electronegativity, supported the model initially by proposing resonance hybrid structures, which in theory might work. We later found evidence that proved that even this model wasn't quite right either. Because the main flaw was the model we're looking at at the moment um, has carbon-carbon double bonds, would be beha behaving like an alkene. So it would have similar carbon-carbon double bond lengths to an alkene. It would have similar chemical behaviour to an alkene. It would have similar enthalpies of hydrogenation to an alkene. And benzene actually doesn't exhibit any of these behaviours, so it can't quite be this, um, this structure we've got. So first of all, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that um, Kekulé's structure, if we drew it in um, skeletal form at the top of the photograph, um, you'd have three lots of um, minus 120 kilojoules per mole, which is the standard enthalpy of hydrogenation of a carbon-carbon double bond. But however, it's been proven that it's actually uh, minus 208, not minus 360. So if you look at the enthalpy profile diagram, you can see that real benzene um, is somewhere in between cyclohexane at the bottom and uh, cyclohexatriene, uh, a cyclic alkene at the top. So this leads to a problem. What's actually going on? So Kathleen Lonsdale, uh, the first female president of the Royal Society of Chemistry, were, was able to prove in 1922, using X-ray crystallography, uh, that the carbon-carbon bond length across the benzene ring was actually equal. Uh, if you were to have a carbon-carbon single bond, it's significantly longer than a carbon-carbon double bond as found in an alkene. So what we're looking at is that the bond length of the two types of bonds are different. So if you were to have a perfect hexagon, symmetrically perfect, as she proved, uh, you'd have to have a bond length somewhere in between. So the carbon-carbon bond length in benzene doesn't match either of them. Um, you'll have to go and look this up separately, because I don't have a picture of her X-ray crystallograph, but it's quite stunning, the evidence, and it's quite um, conclusive as well. And the third problem is something you can prove quite easily in the laboratory using benzene, but we don't work with benzene in the lab because it's a carcinogen. Um, it's a very strong and powerful car carcinogen, um, so it's now banned in laboratories as a solvent. But if you were to, to react it with bromine water, um, it wouldn't actually decolorize as you'd expect it to. The Kekulé structure, and you can see at the top of the page, if that had true carbon-carbon double bonds in it, they'd behave like alkenes and therefore they decolorize bromine water. So remember to use all of these in um, exam questions when you're asked about the evidence that disproves um, Kekulé's structure or the evidence for benzene structure. <laughs>